Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how to segment remote sensing imagery with text prompt using the segment anything model. And so go to the website, samgeo.gshub.org, and then click examples, text prompt. So this example essentially shows you how to segment uh, using text prompt. For example, if you want to extract buildings, you can just specify that you want buildings or trees or, or anything else. And you don't need any training data. Uh, the algorithm will be able to segment the imagery uh, according to the features. And this is the latest implementation of the segment geospatial package. I can scroll down here to show you some of the sample results. For example, this is an imagery, right? And you can uh, specify uh, the text prompt saying, I want buildings. Then you automatically extract buildings, trees. So in this case, it's just the trees. So you will segment trees out of this imagery and it will also create the bounding box. Essentially, uh, it used two packages. Uh, the so-called uh, grounding dyno is to basically uh, find bounding box and then use the bounding box to inform the segment NEC model. So this way you get the imagery. So this is one of the results. Uh, you, if you just want to show the segmentation result, you can do it like this, uh, overlay on top of the imagery. You can also export the grayscale imagery so basically a binary imagery then you can convert to vector data uh, if you want lastly you can do interactive segmentations you can load imagery and then you can space uh, um, adjust the parameters you want trees you want buildings or something like that then you should be able to use this interactive GUI to the uh, segmentation okay so uh, if you want to try it out you are welcome to open for example in Google Colab or or uh, uh, playing the computer studio lab. You can also download this one to your computer. And keep in mind, this one requires GPU. So if you don't have a GPU, it's going to be pretty slow. So I highly recommend that uh, you try this one on a GPU machine. And I'm gonna, I already downloaded this one on my computer. And I'm gonna show you here step-by-step step how to uh, do that. First, you need to uncommon uh, this line to install these uh, packages. So we need the segment geospatial. Essentially, this is what this package is about and the grounding dyno. I've not included this one as a dependency of this package yet because uh, this one is not available on Conda for I cannot add it, but um, you also need leaf map and local type server for displaying the interactive map. Once you install the package, then I can import the library. So we need um, the first function here, TMS to GOT. Uh, this one allows you to download um, imagery from uh, base maps. Then we also need the length sam, so basically the language uh, segment anything model. So this one allows us to use the text prompt to do the segmentation. Once we import the libraries, then we can create an interactive map. So we're going to use the Google uh, satellite base map. And you can see here, you're welcome to change the uh, latitude and longitude to any location and also the zoom level to anywhere you like. Uh, you can try it out on your own area. Uh, keep it in mind, this is just for a uh, kind of preliminary. Uh, it's uh, still a lot of work need to be done, but at least I saw, I want to show you uh, it's really promising because you can use text prompt without any training data to do segmentation. So for example, this is the area I want and I have a lot of trees here. Right now, I want to segment a tree outside from this imagery. So just take a look at the imagery and then we can download it. You can uh, simply draw a rectangle on the map. So I can, for example, here you can draw I use to drawing tool to draw a rectangle, or I can directly use the area, for example, the um, predefined area. Uh, if you already know the uh, latitude uh, uh, south west and the northeast corner, you can uh, specify the coordinates here, and then you can just download the imagery. So you see here, it's basically downloading all the tiles, and then mosaic them together as a GeoTIFF. Uh, it's done, so 45 tiles. Once you have that, then I can just load the imagery on the map. Keep in mind, if you have data on your computer, you are welcome also to use this directly imagery on your computer. So you don't need to download anything from the web services. So this is the base map. So you can zoom out a little bit to see this imagery. So clearly you can see some trees, you can see some buildings. Um, that what we want to do is to extract some trees out of this imagery. Okay. Once we have the imagery, then what we need to do is to create the lamb sam. So basically the segment any uh, anything model class and then we state we can do segmentation so this one if it is the first time you are running this it might take a couple of minutes because it needs to download the model and also the weights and also the model checkpoints 
from the internet and then it's going to load the data to your GPU if you have GPU or on your CPU if you have your mouse uh, this is going to show you here the model type right so uh, you can also specify for example the um uh, yeah so there are three different model types and once you have that then we can uh, specify the text prompt so the text prompt basically it tells the program what you want uh, so in this case i want the tree so you just specify okay i want the tree and next this is just one line of code to do the segmentation so you're going to pass in the imagery so this is imagery that we just downloaded the text prompt uh, there is the tree and then the box threshold and the text threshold so you can read the description here let me run this one first this one is going to take a couple seconds it's actually pretty quick so the box threshold because as i showed you earlier um the segmentation animals model can accept um, bounding boxes so the bounding boxes actually loads are uh, uh, um, retrieved using the grounding dino package so basically you can you can recognize the object based on the text prompt you can draw the bounding boxes all around the trees and then we use those bounding boxes passing to the segment energy model to do the segmentation so those these two parameters controls uh, the how many objects you want to detect uh, if it, the value ranges from 0 to 1 so the larger the value basically the higher the standard so that means it's uh, the, uh, the fewer project you want to detect the smaller the value uh, the more uh, the less the more relaxed so basically it's a uh, not a high criteria so we're going to detect more objects so assume this is we use the uh, 0.24 and 0.24 you're welcome to adjust these two parameters and we show you later how to do that interactively. So after we do the segmentation, now we can use the function show annotations uh, to show the object. So the, you can choose the color map and also the box color, for example, red color, the title, and whether you want to blend the object or not. Actually, this one is not needed. Uh, the blend is only needed when you uh, save the result. <coughs> Excuse me. So take a look at this. Pretty nice. And so here we use the color map like green, and the box color red and also the auto title so you see it overlay on top of the imagery it's it does a pretty decent job right you see it. of course there's some missing uh smaller one here for example some of this in here but overall it looks pretty good and also some missing trees in here you can adjust the parameters uh if you like so next i can show you for example i can uh, change it to uh, other color for example this one and also the bounty box i can change to maybe uh, you can use any hex color code so i can do um how about this zero zero oh, hex tag right rgb so red green and blue maybe use blue be easier like that and run this one again okay so now you see the result uh the annotation like the color and also it's by default there's a alpha so you can change the alpha so by default is 0.4 uh, you can change the box color well if you don't need the box uh, you can remove that and the title so the alpha by default is 0.4 you can change it to more opaque okay so this is how you can control uh, extracted just one item call and then just using text no training sample nothing and then you will be able to extract all those you see on low left corner here, it looks uh, some like mission error here because some of those are big. But again, you can uh, adjust the parameters. Similarly, I can show you just without the box, right? Just the color, just the trees, the green trees, something like this. So, um, and the last one, if you just want the binary, the grayscale imagery, you can do it like this. So grayscale uh, without the boxes and then alpha equal to one, that means it's... Uh, we opaque then we're going to blend or not if you don't blend blend means that uh, it's going to uh overlay on top of the set image uh, the, the imagery that you use otherwise you just the uh, classification result and you can also specify the output so in this case it's going to save the out result as whatever name you choose uh three stock teeth right on the left side here you see my the image stock teeth is the original imagery we downloaded this stock TF is the segmentation result. So this shows you how easy it is to do the segmentation and then you can export a binary uh, image. After that, you can convert to a vector data. So sometimes if you want to calculate area, you want to overlay on, on, on top of other data layers, it might be useful to convert it to vector data. So you can just same doc raster to vector, then the input, the output, and run it. 
on the left side so you will see like we have added 133 with the uh the raster data and also the vector data so now we can um over there on top of the map so you can see what it looks like we now we have both the vector data and also the raster data so take a look at this and you can use the layer control here to turn this one off right so this is the tree and this is you can change the opacity right and you can turn this one off right just the tree turn this one off and the imagery you can change the color if you want so right now i'm using the green color of course on the left side here it shows some overestimation but you know training nothing is just use text so uh, pretty amazing lastly i can show you how to do that interactively so uh if i ask you this one to show map and so it will automatically add interactive buoy interactive buoy to the low uh, to the upper right corner here and this is proving that's the same thing that we went just went through earlier right so you can use the text prompt again i'm going to extract trees then you can adjust uh the rate source by default if you just do this one segment it's going to show you no object found and that means um if the standard is too high so if we adjust back to for example point two four similar to this one you should be able to see the same result that we just did earlier segment and it usually takes three to four seconds so now you see it's pretty good and you can adjust the op layer opacity just like what we did earlier uh, the nice thing about this is you can adjust the parameter so if you uh, have a higher value you probably are going to detect less or uh, fewer objects i see now you only have two of those in here this is the more like try and error so you need to figure out what's the best uh, for your area so if i change to really small you want to detect a whole lot more objects man oops uh out of memory so uh, yeah i if you run multiple times sometimes you have too many uh, use too much gpu so it doesn't work but you're welcome to uh, make adjustments so i'm going to maybe let me reset here see the output and then restart the kernel so yeah so this is where you can make the adjustment and you can show you maybe i can show you some other if it works on other areas so let me try this one here run this one for example if you want buildings uh, you can find an area with buildings these buildings are pretty i think a bit difficult so let me find an uh area with like more larger buildings so just to showcase what it uh, looks like so maybe here not exactly sure if it works or not but uh, we can give it a try so this is more like testing on the fly so how about this like these are all the buildings that i want to detect and maybe I can draw a rectangle here, see if it works. Some of the buildings, right? Next. So you also have trees. Uh, we can also take, uh, see if it works uh, or not. Then we can download the imagery. Okay. Do the same thing. Download the imagery, see how big it is. Uh, this is pretty deep, maybe thanks to 18. So usually it would be like 30, 40, it would be, great. It would be good. If it's 70, it might be out of memory. Okay. So 24 looks pretty good. Now we can add the data, uh, the layer to the map. See, okay. So this is the uh, the imagery we have. Now, let me remove this layer here. Now let's do the segmentation interactively. See if it works, right? Of course, you can right here uh, initialize the same, and then I can just type buildings. <laughs> Once this one is finished, then we can start doing the segmentation. The text prompt is going to be buildings. Of course, you can try three again. We can, I will show you later how to do that. Okay. Text prompt. And then you can run this line of code if you want. But if we, if you want to directly use the, and uh, then maybe let's try this one first. I want to show, uh, predict. And usually this is only a couple seconds, uh, three, four seconds. Okay. And run this one again okay yeah it's pretty good of course there are some trees inside because it's not you need to adjust the parameters so it looks overall i think uh pretty decent so now let's uh, scroll back to the end here and run this one then we can test it interactively what parameters might be good for this kind uh for this area right let me zoom out a little bit uh, zoom in a little bit here and now we can type this one buildings okay 
So uh, like what we did earlier, right? We use 2.24. 2.24. Hopefully no main uh, errors, right? Okay, so take take a look. Uh, pretty nice. So buildings, and scroll. You see this one here is not perfect. Also some like trees here in the center. You can so of course you can low uh, uh increase the number. Okay, so let's see about this. So the larger the number, uh, the fewer number of objects you want to take. Overall, is I think it's okay. Please, I'll see. You box space hole, or maybe increase the text. Okay, now it's too big, so it doesn't find anything. Increase the text space hole. And okay, yeah, it doesn't change that much. Oh, of course, on the right here, it's uh, now loads are not detected. And again, let's try out with the trees, see how it works. Okay, trees, and probably we want to try the smaller one. So, ready? Let's turn off the buildings there first. On this one, do the second person. It's pretty, pretty good. Okay. We can uh because you miss some trees and this maybe change it to a smaller value like four point two one something. Uh, now it's a little bit too much. It also include the rows, added so probably the box. Let me increase a little bit. I think overall point two four to two five. Um, usually the good starting point. Now it's better. See here trees, and some trees. Of course, there's still some. Missing in here, so decrease a little bit. Four. Oh. Uh, still some small missing, but overall, it's uh, the majority of those I actually was able to be able. It's going to save you a lot of time if you want to misclassification. So you can use this as the initial starting point, and then you can refine so you can make adjustment. Let's see, see uh, what kind of parameter would be based for your area. Then you can start doing uh, image second. Okay, so that's all for this uh, video. I hope you find it useful. I'll see you in the next uh, video. Take care. Bye bye.